worth the legs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you. Uh, I know, you know, people watching at home may think, wow, that is, that is just so many amendments. And I, and I think that is the essence of what I'm going to talk about today. And I must also always thank um, the people from Peterborough Kawartha in my riding. It is always an honour to stand here and to speak on something so critical that affects Canadians and families across this country. And what we're speaking about today in particular is domestic violence. This is a bill, S-205, that was put forward by Senator Boisevenu, um, and I will be talking a lot about him in this, in this speech today because it's a very personal story of what he did to put forward this bill. And we had the chance to study this bill in, in my committee, in the Committee of uh, Status of Women, also known as FIWO. So before we go into this and the amendments that we've put forward in this bill, I want to I provide some stats for people watching at home many of whom are living these stats. Domestic violence in this country is an epidemic. 94 Ontario municipalities have declared intimate partner violence an epidemic. In Ontario, 30 women were killed in a 30-week window between 2022 and 2023. Compared with 2014, intimate partner sexual assault was 163 percent higher. There has been an increase of 72 percent in domestic violence in this country. And I think right now what people really have on their mind, especially my Albertan colleagues, is a tragic story that happened just weeks ago out front of an elementary school. And the headline reads, man who killed his estranged wife outside Calgary school was facing domestic violence charges. The man who killed his estranged wife outside a Calgary elementary school was facing criminal charges for domestic violence and was charged with twice violating a contact, no contact order. This woman was murdered in front of an elementary school and her three children no longer have either parents. And this bill that we're talking about today, S-205, could have prevented that tragedy. So let's break it down and let's talk about why these amendments are critical and why I'm asking every member in this House to support these amendments and to strengthen the bill that it was originally created in. So the Senator Story who put forward this bill, Senator Boaz, Boaz Venu, um, I always struggle saying his name correctly, so he's an incredible human, and his daughter was murdered. Uh, she was murdered in 2002. She was 27 years old. She was randomly kidnapped and killed because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time by a repeat violent offender. And to, to Senator's quotes, I will say, changing the system takes a lot of energy, but I had no right to miss the mission that Julie had given me. One day I will return to Julie, it will be under her, my judge, and I'm sure she'll tell me that we've done great things together, the two of us. I think it's very important that members in this House and people at home and constituents recognize that the intention behind this bill comes from a very personal place of lived experience of a man who lost his daughter to domestic violence. He did his due diligence. He went and, and spoke with stakeholders and did all of the legal correspondence that was necessary to ensure this bill was done properly. And what happened when it went to status of women, FIWO, is it was watered down beyond belief. The whole purpose of the bill was removed by the amendments that were put forward by the Liberals and NDP. And so today we're asking them to reconsider what they're doing to this, to this watered-down bill and to approve the amendments that we have put forward, to leave the bill that it was, to put victims first. And I want to give you some victim testimony from the committee that verifies what we're saying here today. This is Ms. Diane Tremblay. She testified at FIWO on November 20, 2023, about S-205. And here's what she had to say. If my abuser had been required to wear an electronic plate bracelet under a recognizance order pursuant to Section 810 of the Criminal Code as proposed in Senator Boisvenu's bill, my children and I would have been safer and I wouldn't have had to go through these attempted murders. Believe me, you don't emerge unhurt from an attempted murder. You suffer the after effects for life. 
I am asking the House of Commons, the Prime Minister of Canada, the Minister of Judges, the judges, all the province of Canada and the members to pass and enforce this new bill. It should be adopted immediately without any amendments. This is victim testimony. It's very urgent. To conclude, I'd like to add that we have a right to live peacefully and safely under the law in our country. And for those watching at home and, and, and when you're looking at these amendments, the Liberals removed the clause that is asking for the electronic bracelet to be worn by the attacker. And that is the whole weight of this bill. That is the whole point of it, because that, that period of time in between when a, a victim is, is strong enough and courageous enough to even a, to, to report it, which is also another issue, they are in a very dangerous, dangerous position to be attacked by their attacker or to be killed and their children. And I think it's also really important for people at home to recognize if you want to really think big picture and be preventative of domestic violence, how many of those attackers grew up in a home where they were children and witnessed domestic violence? You have to break the cycle. And the impacts on children witnessing domestic violence is it's profound. I want to go on to another uh, victim testimony. This is by Ms. Martine Jensen. Uh, Jensen, she's the president, founder, and frontline worker of La Maison de Guéry, November 20th, 2023. She testified, and she gave very powerful testimony in the status of women, and she said, over the past 20 years, I've worked with hundreds of women who needed help. There is no way to hide them. Men can track them down at their place of work or through their family. They can follow children to school or to their friends' homes. The man will never stop stalking them, following them, harassing them, and harming them. Until an electronic bracelet is required, women and their children will never be protected. Electronic bracelets may not be perfect, but that's all we have for the time being. We have no protection. That's why we are asking you, on behalf of all women, to pass this bill unamended. This is victim testimony. Again, Mr. Speaker, I will reiterate this over and over and over again. We were elected in this House to elevate the voices of the people outside of this House. We were not elected to push our own agenda and our own ide ideology, and we were elected to make life better and safer. And right now, this country is not safe. You have serial killers who are eligible for day parole, re-traumatizing their victims. You have children, mothers, people who are from all socioeconomic classes afraid to go to school. These men, these attackers, will find them wherever they are. They are stalkers, and they control them, and they control their life, and they ruin children's lives, and they ruin all the people around them their lives. This, is, this should be the most simple bill. We have an opportunity in this House to fix it. And in committee, I, one of the, the members on the Liberal side said, well, we're just, we're just trying to keep it in line with how the, the current justice system works. The current justice system is broken, full stop. And all you have to do is listen to the stats, read the paper. There is a global, uh, or sorry, a CTV reporter who tweeted this past weekend who had one of, uh, somebody criminally charged for harassing her. She was told to con uh, contact the police the minute that he contacted her again. He's supposed to be in jail. He's out. That is, that is the danger of this. And this bill and these amendments we put forward, the bill amends the criminal code with respect to bail pending trial and peace bonds to provide that a judge, and in some cases a peace officer, may impose as a condition of release an electronic bracelet on an accused who is released pending trial on a defendant who has entered into an 810 bond. Electronic monitoring creates a security perimeter between the two intimate partners. The victim can carry a transmitter with them at all times, allowing them to maintain the safety perimeter even if they are away from home, giving the power to the victim. I see my time is up, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. I'm asking every member in this House, please vote in support of these amendments. Let's strengthen our justice system and protect victims from domestic violence. Thank you.